Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lions Den with another news and commentary. Um, I'm doing an update of the incident that happened about a week ago when six Philadelphia police officers were shot um, at, a, at a North Philadelphia neighborhood. The shooter, Maurice Hill, you wouldn't believe who he, who he is. He was a federal informant. That's right. I'm going to read this article. This comes from the, the appeal. It says the man accused of shooting six Philadelphia police officers was federal informant. A federal prosecutor in Pennsylvania blamed DA Larry Krasner for a bloody standoff, but the suspect has a long relationship with the government that includes a sentence reduction because of his cooperation. U.S. Attorney William McSwan quickly blamed Philadelphia District Attorney Larry Krasner for the August 14 shooting of six police officers who were trying to serve a warrant. In a statement released less than 24 hours after the standoff ended in North Philadelphia, Ms. Swan, the U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, said the shooting was participated by a stunning disrespect for law enforcement that was championed by Krasner. I'm, I'm going to stop you right there. Now I see why they kept him alive. They kept him alive because he was a federal informant. And if they would have killed him, he would have been null and void. So everybody wanted to know why he's still alive. This is why. And basically, he would spill the beans as a federal employment, a federal informant, excuse me. So I'm going to see you reading this. It said the district attorney office has no interest in engaging with Bill Swan's inappropriate attempts to run for political office from his taxpayer-funded person, Donald Trump's DOJ. Krasner's spokesperson, Jane Rowe, told the appeal. Ms. Swan failed to mention, however, that alleged shooter Maurice Hill interactions with law enforcement predicated Krasner's taking office, nor did Ms. Swan acknowledge that the 36-year-old Hill, who was on Saturday, was charged by Krasner's office with attempted murder and multiple counts of aggravating assault related to the incident, has been a federal informant for years, according to the documents obtained by the appeal. And this is interesting. Um, wow. I'm, um, and according to this, it says, factors warranting a downward departure as the government set forth in, the, in its motion for downward departure. The defendant has proven substantial assistance to the government. He has testified before the grand jury on two occasions, was willing to testify at trial, and provided information about a shooter that led to an arrest. He has cooperated with the government and provided information that has and will likely continue to imperil in, in the safety and that of his family. In June of 2008, Hill entered a guilty plea the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania for being a felon in possession of a firearm. He was sentenced in the in the case of in 2010 and in April 2010, sentencing memorandum filled with the court. Hill attorney Wayne Maynard stated that federal prosecutors filed a motion for downward departure from Hill's guidelines sentence because he provided substantial assistance to the federal government. He has testified before the grand jury on two occasions, was willing to testify at trial and provided information about a shooter that led to an arrest, Maynard wrote. He has cooperated with the government and provided information that has and will likely continue to imperil his safety and that of his family. Maynard argued that Hill should receive a lower than average sentence because of his cooperation and that a federal prosecutor made a similar argument for such a sentence. The federal prosecutor's sentencing memorandum was sealed by the court so the specifics of the downward departure are unknown. In April of 2010, Hill was sentenced to 55 months in federal prison followed by a three-year on his supervised release. That year, the average sentence for a person convicted of a being a felon in possession of a firearm, firearm was more than 75 months in prison, according to a statistics published by the U.S. Sentencing Commission. According to the agency, roughly one quarter of all people sentenced 
in federal court receive a sentence below the standard guideline minimum, the majority of whom receive sentencing relief for providing substantial assistance to the federal government. Prosecutors often file sub sub substantial assistance motions. In this case, upon such a motion which states that a defendant would, has provided substantial assistance in an investigation or prosecution of another person who was committed an offense, the court may depart from the sentencing guidelines. However, because much of Hill's federal court record is sealed, it is unknown whether such a motion was filed in his case. So really, he's a narc. He's, and I'm going to step you right there. He's a snitch. So that's why he was a federal informant. He was a snitch to provide help by the federal government, probably to, you know, where he's at, try to help doing a drug bust or anything that deals with drugs. And this is really, really a hot, hot topic right now because the mainstream media never talk about the stuff the, of the suspect Maurice Hill before. All they was talking about is he was responsible for shooting five police officers, but they didn't say why he was alive, nor he didn't say why Maurice Hill did the crime against Philadelphia police officers. Now we know why. And it says... In conclusion, for all the for foregoing reasons, the defendant Maurice Hill respectfully re requests the court to consider a downward departure based on his substantial assistance to the government. Hill has a lengthy arrest record dating back to when he was a teenager, but has avoided conviction in many of the cases brought against him. Alexandria Nat Natapov, professor of law at the University of California, Irvine, told the appeal that much of federal criminal is aimed at incentivized cooperation and a well-known well bug in the system is that informants act with impunity knowing the government will likely turn a blind eye. There is also a his long history of federal informant involvement in high-profile crimes, including mafioso Sammy the Bull Gravano and James Whitey Bulger, and mass killer Ricky Javon Gray, who was involved in the murder of seven people in the 2006, but later convicted and executed for killing four. In September 2001, federal prosecutors in Virginia filed a substantial assistance motion in a drug case involving Gray. Federal prosecutors attempt to revoke Hill's supervised release several times after Pennsylvania prosecutors charged him with new crimes, however. All these efforts had to be withdrawn because state prosecutors either dismissed charge or failed to get a conviction. The final petition to revoke Hill's supervised release came in April 2016 when federal prosecutors said he was found in possession of roughly half of gram of crack cocaine by Philadelphia police then charged with a misdemeanor drug possession. In May of 2016, the district attorney's office offered, a, offered Hill a plea deal in the case, but was rejected according to a copy of his charging docket ob obtained by the appeal. On August 31st, 2016, Judge Charles Hayding granted a motion to suppress the evidence in Hill's case, which led to prosecutors dismiss the case in October 2016. Records related to the case were sealed after Pennsylvania's clean slate law was passed in 2018. A spokesperson for McSwan, who swore in as the U.S. attorney in April 2018, declined to comment on the Hill case when contacted by the appeal. So that's the end of the article, ladies and gentlemen. So you see why now Maurice Hill is still alive. He was a federal informant. He's a snitch. He's been a snitch to them for years. And now that's why Philadelphia police, you know, you notice that they didn't kill him. They didn't even do what they did with my Kyle Johnson incident. But you notice that this is why he called his attorney for years because they negotiated a surrender between him and the Philadelphia police department. Little did they know that he was an informant to try to help crack down drug dealers in, an, in, in that same neighborhood when he, he was responsible in doing the shooting. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, because obviously it, it, it opens up on why 
he is still alive. And normally, you see a lot of blacks who do... Normally, you see blacks shooting at anyone, including police officers. So, he was proving that now he is in a performance. And again, that's why he's still alive. And that's why he's probably getting lesser jail time because he's a, he's a federal informant. Y'all let me know what you think about this story. Like, click, subscribe, and remember to click the notification bell for all the news and commentary. With that being said, this is Lion's Den signing off. Deuces.